Once forced to ration every drop, Israel now exports water to its neighbors. And the secret? A mind-bending project where salty Mediterranean water travels uphill into a desert lake. It's a radical reimagining of how a nation survives and thrives in the face of extreme scarcity. So how did Israel pull it off? And what does it mean for the rest of the world as water scarcity grows? Let's dive in. But to truly understand how Israel became a water powerhouse, we have to go back to when the land was dry, the people were desperate, and the dream of flowing water was just that. Israel is using desalinated seawater from the Mediterranean to replenish its largest natural freshwater source, the Sea of Galilee. The process is nothing short of remarkable. Water is filtered through advanced desalination plants along the Mediterranean coast and then transported north to the Sea of Galilee. This system not only addresses Israel's domestic water needs, but also creates a surplus that supports regional cooperation by supplying water to neighboring areas. To fully appreciate Israel's innovation in water management, it's essential to explore the historical context. By the 1950s, water shortages in the region had reached a critical level, affecting development and agriculture. The urgency for sustainable water management grew as immigration increased the population and intensified demand on natural resources. In 1937, a British engineer named Walter Clay Loudermilk proposed diverting water from the Jordan River and its tributaries to the arid Negev Desert in the south. Although implementation was delayed due to World War II and geopolitical challenges, the concept laid the foundation for future infrastructure. After the Declaration of Independence in 1948, the newly formed state initiated the development of the National Water Carrier, a landmark project that would redefine the region's water landscape Water was transported from the Sea of Galilee in the north, an area that receives relatively more rainfall, to the arid southern regions of Israel, which experienced significantly less precipitation. Israel undertook substantial financial investment to fund this massive project, which played a crucial role in enabling sustainable development across the country. If your country faced a water crisis tomorrow, what solution would you borrow from Israel? Drop your ideas or your concerns down below. We're reading every single one. So how did a thirsty young nation transform an ambitious idea into a nation-defining megaproject? The National Water Carrier is a 130-kilometer-long system of canals, tunnels, pipelines, reservoirs, and pumping stations stretching from the Sea of Galilee to the Negev Desert. The project was led by Mekorot, Israel's national water company. Construction began in 1953 and involved some of the most complex civil engineering efforts of the era, including the building of extensive reservoirs and a pump system capable of transporting water over significant elevation gains. One of the most notable elements of the carrier is its main pipeline a combination of above-ground canals and underground pipes that spans much of Israel's length. The carrier starts at a pumping station near the Sea of Galilee, where water is drawn and lifted over 200 meters above sea level using powerful pumps. From there, the water flows through a series of tunnels and canals, including the 17-kilometer-long Esh Tunnel, once the longest water tunnel in the world. It then reaches the Esh Reservoir, where it is treated and filtered to ensure quality. Continuing its journey south, the water descends through Israel's central plains before reaching the Negev Desert. Along the way, the system branches out to deliver water to cities, towns, and agricultural communities. Environmental considerations were incorporated into the design to maintain the ecological balance of the Sea of Galilee, with extraction rates carefully managed to protect the lake's natural reserves. The project was completed in June 1964 for 420 million Israeli lira, approximately 112 million U.S. dollars at the time, equivalent to about $1.1 billion today. At its inauguration, 80% of the water was allocated to agriculture and 20% for drinking. 
Over time, demand for drinking water grew, and by the early 1990s, the carrier supplied about half of Israel's drinking water. The Sea of Galilee became a strategic water source, also supplying the Kingdom of Jordan as part of the peace agreement signed in 1994. Initially, Israel provided 25 million cubic meters of water to Jordan annually, which was later increased to 50 million cubic meters in 2021. In essence, the Sea of Galilee now supplies a significant portion of Jordan's water needs. In 2017, following five consecutive years of drought, water levels in the Sea of Galilee dropped to historic lows. This situation underscored the need for immediate and innovative solutions. It became evident that a comprehensive and adaptive approach to water management was essential for the future. But even the greatest pipelines can't outrun nature. What happens when the rains stop falling and even your largest lake starts to shrink? That's when Israel took another radical step, turning the sea into a source of salvation. Before exploring, I have a special 10-second request for all of you listening. If you can help me in any way, just hit the notification bell and hit that subscribe button. It helps this channel so much. And if you do that, I will do everything I can to make this show even better for you. Deal? In the 1960s, Israeli scientists began exploring reverse osmosis, a way to remove salt from seawater. It was expensive and slow, but showed potential. Over time, engineers improved it, making it faster, more affordable, and efficient. By the early 2000s, that vision became reality. In 2005, Israel launched the Ashkelon desalination plant, one of the world's largest at the time. Seawater entered through large pipes. High-pressure filters removed the salt. The result? Clean, drinkable water for homes, farms, and industries. More plants followed. Hadera, Palmacum, Sorek, and Ashdod, forming a network along the Mediterranean coast. Together, they now produce about 600 million cubic meters of fresh water annually, supplying nearly 80% of Israel's domestic needs. By 2022, after five years of drought, the Sea of Galilee's water levels dropped significantly. Once a vital source, it now needed replenishing. Engineers reversed the flow, sending desalinated seawater back to the lake. It was the first time any country used treated seawater to refill a freshwater lake. Built by Mekorod, Israel's national water company, the project includes a 13-kilometer underground pipeline. At one end, desalination plants, the other end, the Sea of Galilee. The water moves through filters, pumps, and tunnels treated and pressurized before quietly flowing into the lake. A second phase will connect additional desalination plants and groundwater wells to boost capacity and ensure a reliable supply, even in dry seasons. Desalination was a game changer, but what about the water that's already been used? While most countries let it go to waste, Israel had a different idea. Give every drop a second chance. In most countries, water that goes down the drain is gone forever. But in Israel, that water comes back to life. Thanks to one of the world's most advanced wastewater treatment systems, over 90% of Israel's wastewater is collected, purified, and reused, mainly for farming. That's the highest reuse rate in the world. In comparison, Spain, the next best, recycles just 30%. Even shower water in Israel can end up growing oranges in the desert. This didn't happen overnight. With limited water sources, Israel had to think differently, not just saving water, but reclaiming what others discard. At the heart of this system is Shoftin, short for the Dan Region Wastewater Treatment Plant, located just south of Tel Aviv. It handles wastewater from over two and a half million people. Underground pipes quietly move used water from homes, hospitals, schools, and factories to this massive facility. There, the water passes through several treatment stages, such as bubbling aeration tanks, settling pools, and advanced filtering systems. The process takes up to 10 days, 
longer than typical treatment systems because this water isn't meant to be dumped. It's meant to feed farmland. Once treated, the water is pumped through a special pipeline running more than 100 kilometers south to the Negev Desert. It's stored underground and used to irrigate crops like wheat, citrus, grapes, and potatoes. This system is a lifeline for Israeli agriculture. Half of the irrigation water used in the country comes from treated wastewater. Without it, farming in the dry southern regions wouldn't be possible. Beneath Tel Aviv, a hidden network of pipes sends treated water south, like water flowing through veins of the land. In the Negev, it rises through drip irrigation tubes, nourishing crops drop by drop. What was once wastewater becomes life again, a closed loop of recycling and renewal, driven by innovation and necessity. But what good is water if you can't deliver it wisely? That's where Israel's genius shines, at the root level, literally. In a country where water is scarce, every drop matters. Instead of losing it to the desert heat, Israeli farmers developed a smarter method, drip irrigation. Thin plastic tubes with tiny drippers run through fields delivering water directly to each plant's roots. This system lets up to 95% of the water be absorbed by the soil, minimizing waste from puddles, runoff, or evaporation. According to the United Nations FAO, drip irrigation can cut water use by half or more compared to traditional methods. The results are clear. In parts of the Negev Desert, once barren land now grows tomatoes, dates, avocados, citrus, and olives. Drip irrigation has made farming possible where rainfall is minimal, helping preserve Israel's limited freshwater resources for the future. What started as a necessity became a mindset, doing more with less. This approach has spread around the world, from California to India, supporting farmers facing drought and changing climates. Israel's drip irrigation isn't just a technology, it's a global model for sustainable agriculture, proving that even in harsh environments, a greener future is possible, one drop at a time. This wasn't just a national victory, it was the birth of a global movement. What started in a tiny Middle Eastern country is now changing lives across continents. After years of drought and innovation, Israel didn't just solve its water crisis. It created a model now used around the world. Countries such as India, China, Australia, and the United States are turning to Israeli solutions to tackle water scarcity and grow crops in dry, challenging environments. In California, prolonged drought led to a partnership with Israel's IDE Technologies, resulting in the creation of the Carlsbad Desalination Plant, the largest in the United States. This facility now produces approximately 50 million gallons of drinking water each day, utilizing Israeli desalination expertise. In India, Israeli company Netafim is empowering small-scale farmers with advanced drip irrigation systems that allow them to grow more with less water. In Australia, Israeli water reuse technologies are improving city water supplies in Perth and Adelaide. Meanwhile, in China, Israeli filtration and recycling systems are being integrated into municipal water infrastructure to meet rising urban demand. This is more than a series of business deals. It represents a global impact through innovation and cooperation. At the forefront of these advancements are Israeli leaders in water technology. IDE Technologies operates over 400 desalination plants worldwide. Mekorot, Israel's national water company, is recognized for its smart water grid systems, leak detection, and planning models used internationally. Netafim, the pioneer of modern drip irrigation, now serves over 110 countries with solutions that support farming under water stress. Israel, once forced to ration water by the bucket, now plays a role in quenching the thirst of nations. Its journey from scarcity to abundance is not just a technological achievement, it is a moral mission. 
By sharing knowledge, building partnerships, and leading with resilience, Israel demonstrates how the world can shape a more sustainable future together. If you believe innovation like this should be shared with the world, hit the like button. It tells the algorithm that clean water matters. But with great innovation comes new responsibilities. Can Israel's water miracle withstand a future shaped by climate uncertainty and regional tensions? Israel may have one of the world's most advanced water systems, but the journey is not over. In the Middle East, water is more than a resource. It plays a crucial role in regional cooperation and tension. Now climate change is raising the stakes. Temperatures are rising, rainfall is declining, droughts are becoming longer and more intense. According to the Israel Meteorological Service, the region could see a 20% drop in natural water supply by the year 2050 if global temperatures continue to climb. This puts more strain on shared resources like the Jordan River, where countries already compete for shrinking water. As rivers and aquifers dry up, diplomacy often dries up too. Even small shortages can trigger regional instability. Water scarcity affects not only crops and drinking water, it also impacts long-term national resilience. Israel shares water systems with neighboring countries that face similar pressures. As demand rises and supply shrinks, the risks increase. A drop in the Sea of Galilee or another multi-year drought could have serious consequences. This is what keeps water planners alert. But Israel is not standing still. It is investing in the next generation of water technology. Researchers are developing solar power desalination plants to bring clean water to remote areas without fossil fuels. The Zuckerberg Institute for Water Research sees this as a way to support off-grid communities in arid regions. At the same time, Israeli companies are building atmospheric water generators, devices that extract drinking water from the air. WaterGen, a leader in this field, has already deployed this technology in more than 20 countries, supporting communities in disaster zones and dry regions. Israel is also advancing wastewater treatment, aiming to recycle more and waste less. Smart networks are being created to detect leaks before they happen. The future of water in this region will not rely on rain, it will depend on innovation, resilience, and preparation. Which part of Israel's water strategy impressed you the most? Desalination, wastewater recycling, or drip irrigation? Comment your favorite and let's see which one wins the popular vote. If you found today's video interesting, don't hesitate to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Your support is very important to us. Be sure to check out the next video appearing on your screen. You're sure to love the content we bring please leave a comment about which country you'd like us to explore next. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Thanks for being with us. Leave a comment, like to show your support, and remember to hit that subscribe button for more exciting videos. See you next time.